When it comes to great shonen anime, the heart and soul are undoubtedly the battles, and One Piece, as a heavyweight in this genre, has shattered all frontiers with the incredible and sometimes downright crazy events of the Wano arc. But before we dive into the juicy details, let's take a moment to remember some of the all-time greatest fights in this epic adventure. So without any more delay, here's Vinitube's Top 20 One Piece Fights. <laughs> Kicking off our top 20 is the high stakes clash between Sanji, the culinary genius, and the crafty CP9 agent Jabra. While Sanji may not be at the forefront of every pivotal battle like his counterpart Zoro, his contribution is undeniably crucial. After a humiliating defeat at the hands of CP9 agent Khalifa, the swirly eyebrowed chef makes a triumphant comeback by saving Usopp from certain death and engaging in a fierce showdown with Jabra. Now, the Cypher Pole number 9 or CP9 is no trifling adversary. These covert assassins who work for the world government are elite soldiers skilled in Rokoshiki, a form of superhuman martial arts. What makes this showdown stand out is that at the time, Sanji hadn't yet mastered the Skywalk, an advanced variant of the Rokoshiki technique Geppo. Despite this, he relies solely on his speed and agility to orchestrate a spectacular takedown of Jabra that leaves observers unable to distinguish his moves from those of a Geppo user. Who can forget the heartwarming moment when Luffy places his treasured straw hat atop Nami's head while she tearfully begs for help? Our pick for the 19th spot is Luffy's first confrontation with a bona fide villain. Despite Arlong's physical prowess as a fishman, his crazy, rapidly regenerating shark teeth, as well as his menacing sword, nothing stops Luffy from handing him a solid beating. To this day, this duel remains one of the most satisfying acts of revenge in the first half of the One Piece saga. The image of Nami's possessions being shattered and Arlong Park reduced to a heap of rubble is forever etched in our minds as one of those unforgettable moments where we as fans stand in unity with the Straw Hats in both heart and spirit. <laughs> Next up is a clash of the gods. Enel, the self-proclaimed god of Skypea, faces off against Straw Hat Luffy. Now that we're aware of Luffy's newly awakened sun god Nika powers, this early showdown seemed to foreshadow Gum Gum Fruit's hidden potential and Luffy's immunity to electricity. Enel wields the Logia-type Rumble Rumble Fruit, granting him control over lightning. But here's the twist. Luffy's rubbery body makes him NL's worst nightmare. Despite the hype around NL's invincible fruit, he barely scratches Luffy. Instead, he finds himself squashed between Luffy's gigantic golden punch and the Shandoran Belfry. Let's not underestimate NL though. His powers can fry opponents of the caliber of Zoro, Sanji, and Wiper, and he's also capable of wiping out entire Sky Islands using the Arc Maxim to supercharge his attacks. In addition to his outrageous god complex, NL doesn't play for any team neither the pirates nor the world government. So this makes him one of the most intriguing baddies to appear so early in the series, and we're eagerly waiting to see if he's going to make a comeback. <laughs> In our next showdown at number 17, Luffy faces off once again against the Logia user, and this time it's none other than the former Shichibukai and head of Baroque Works, Sir Crocodile. In the backdrop of a raging rebellion and hidden conspiracies in the Kingdom of Arabasta, this clash stands as one of the most heart-pounding moments in One Piece history. Our easygoing captain is defeated twice by the formidable crocodile and pushed to the brink of death on both occasions. 
Luffy's unconventional solution to counter the warlord Sansan fruit powers, which involves consuming copious amounts of water, captures his zany nature perfectly, but also turns out to be a clever tactic. These comical moments seemingly merge with the grittier third act of the battle, where Luffy soldiers on despite being battered and poisoned. At the heart of this clash lies a central theme that has always defined the Straw Hats' legacy, their unwavering commitment to justice and selflessness, especially when it comes to the Nakama. And this battle serves as a powerful example of that bedrock principle. Up next is the only clash where the entire Straw Hat crew square off against the colossal zombie oars brought back to life by the Shichibukai Gekko Moria. Oars, uh, while alive, was known as the continent puller for a reason, and this battle is no walk in the park. What makes things interesting though, is that the revived Oars has been given Luffy's stolen shadow. The match seems almost like a test to see how the crew measures up to their captain, and boy does it hint at just how much they fall short of Luffy's incredible strength, especially when we fast forward to the Sarbodi arc. But here's the kicker. While the Straw Hats crew might not match up to their captain, the battle is a shining example of their awesome teamwork, spot on strategy, and a seriously impressive display of each member's skills and strengths. They take on the impossible and give it everything they've got and a little more till Nightmare Luffy arrives to save the day. At number 15 is the heartbreaking confrontation between two close friends and crewmates Luffy and Usopp. Stemming from an argument over changing ships, Usopp, who's deeply affected and angered by the decision to take part with the Merry Go, challenges his captain to a duel. It's a tearjerker, no doubt. However, it's through this man-to-man -man fight that the two seem to mature almost overnight. This newfound maturity helps them set aside their differences for Robin's sake and stand side by side as they issue a reckless but brave challenge to the world government. Although the tussle between Luffy and Usopp is a landmark moment in their journey as pirates, we're pretty sure we don't want to witness a similar situation between the other members of the crew, and for that we have our fingers firmly crossed. <laughs> At number 14, enter the deceptively likeable Kizaru as he toys with four of the supernovas, Basil Hawkins, Yu Rouge, X-Drake and Scratchman Apu in a lopsided cat and mouse game. The Marine Admiral's entrance, riding a cannonball like a true showstopper, instantly throws everyone for a loop with his laid-back attitude, emotionless gaze and the amusing charade of struggling with a Denden Mushi. What sets Kizaru apart from admirals like Aokiji, who's known for his unwavering moral code, or the authoritarian Akainu, is his enigmatic stance on principles and beliefs. It's this uncertainty that makes him a menacing figure. His mastery over the Logia power of light only enhances his ability to casually play with the super rookies, effectively tarnishing their budding reputations. What truly baffles onlookers is Kizaru's seeming lack of interest in finishing off his woefully mismatched opponents. He approaches his duties with a half-hearted demeanor like someone going through the motions of a dull office job. The next time we cross paths with this admiral, we can't help but wonder which side of his personality will emerge. For our pick at number 13, Let's backtrack to the Dressrosa arc, where Zoro confronts Pika, a top executive of the Don Quixote Pirates. <laughs> 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 
Pickup makes the terrible mistake of underestimating Zoro, totally overlooking the second strongest member of the Straw Hats, while thinking that only Luffy and God Usopp are the big threats amongst the crew. Right from the get-go, Pika's powers of the Stone Stone Fruit, which can reshape entire landscapes and allow him to transform into a gigantic stone golem, give the battle an epic feel. But honestly, when you're up against someone like Pika, who relies on sneaky tactics like targeting the vulnerable, it's quite clear that Zoro has the upper hand. On closer inspection of the moment when Zoro finally slices Pika in half, we realize it's the same attack he initially used against Dracul Mihawk, the world's greatest swordsman. This is truly an eye-opener of Zoro's immense growth since that early encounter with Mihawk. And there's more. Zoro infuses his three swords with Haki, a concept not previously explored but later elaborated upon in the Wano arc. These elements add a whole new layer of significance to the fight, making it more than your average showdown. <laughs> In the midst of the series' most colossal all-out war, one duel stands out. It's the face-off between Edward Newgate, aka Whitebeard, and Marine Admiral Akainu, which is our pick for number 12. The death of Portgas D. Ace at the hands of the Admiral demands serious payback, and that's exactly what unleashes Whitebeard's uncontainable wrath. Here we witness the full extent of Whitebeard's tremor tremor fruit power as Akainu endures a devastating blow to his side, which obliterates the formidable marine headquarters in its wake. Despite sustaining two grievous chest wounds and battling a chronic illness, the veteran Pyra overpowers a high-ranking marine as if it was just child's play. One can only imagine the overwhelming strength Whitebeard must have possessed in his prime. In his attempts to retaliate, Akainu manages to singe the old man's whiskers, and nothing more really. This confrontation serves as an unforgettable testament not only to Whitebeard's unmatched might, but also to the incredible resilience of the Marines' top ranks. In yet another emotionally charged showdown, the 11th position features the revenge match between the Red Scabbards and the formidable Yonko Kaido. These nine loyal retainers have returned after two decades of suffering to liberate their homeland from the clutches of the Azure Dragon. Initially, their assault seems promising, as their unwavering resolve and impressive individual combat styles shine through. However, their lack of power becomes painfully evident when compared to Kaido's monstrous might. Nevertheless, this doesn't diminish the dignity of their endeavor. They launch a second beautifully choreographed assault, employing Odin's signature dual sword attack. With a triumphant cry of Odin, they put their lives on the line. And even in defeat, their honor remains unblemished, a true samurai till the end. Returning to the Dressrosser arc at the halfway mark, Luffy and Trafalgar Law engage in a daring confrontation with Don Quixote do Flamingo. If we were to summarize this battle in just one word, it would be gutsy. This clash is about more than just settling a score for Law, who's out for revenge after Doflamingo has his mentor Don Quixote Rosinante killed. It's a fight that sends shockwaves through the One Piece world. By taking on Doffy, a confirmed ally of the world government with a Yonko's backing, Luffy and Law inadvertently thrust themselves into the world government's spotlight. They're seen not only as liberators of an oppressed nation, but also as a disruptive force that divides the Marines, with some members questioning the true meaning of justice. When it comes to the battle itself, it's it's a nail-biting marathon of techniques, with Luffy, Law and their opponent pulling out all the stops. Plus, for the first time ever, we get a glimpse of a Devil Fruit's awakened form in action. In a nutshell, this final showdown in Dressrosser is a game-changer for the Straw Hats, setting the stage for even bigger adventures ahead.
Next, we travel to the picturesque region of Ringo as Zoro squares off against Gamazo the Manslayer, who turns out to be killer from the Kid Pirates. With a pristine snowscape, a wooden bridge, and a distressed Oiran, this is a quintessentially Japanese scene perfectly tailored for the green haired swordsman. To add some trivia, Ringo was once ruled by Zoro's great uncle, the late Daimyo Shimotsuki Ushimaru, which lends a historical layer to this epic duel. Making it even more compelling, though, Zoro rescues Kozuki Oden's daughter Hiyori from harm during this encounter. And that's not all. He uses two swords instead of his customary three to battle Killer, who just so happens to be the only other non-captain member of the worst generation besides himself. In a remarkable twist, Zoro manages to disarm Killer by taking his scythe even as he's being stabbed, securing a decisive advantage and swiftly defeating his opponent. This beautifully choreographed sequence brings together all these elements in one simple fluid motion, almost like a painting. Charlotte Gatakuri takes on Luffy at number 8. While the term Sweet Commander might sound enchanting and harmless, don't let it fool you, especially when the title belongs to a top commander and son of the powerhouse Yonko Big Mom. One of the longest fights in One Piece, this haki spectacle shows the opponents exhibit their mastery over all three haki forms until Luffy hits the wall with Gatakuri's advanced observation haki. What makes Gatakuri a nightmare for Luffy is the striking resemblance in their abilities and their indomitable fighting spirit. Gatakuri, having consumed the mochi mochi fruit, wields his devil fruit powers in a manner uncanny similar to Luffy's elastic techniques. But what Luffy can do well? Gatakuri can do even better. Both possess the rare conqueror's haki and their armament haki is evenly matched. However, it's Gatakuri's finely honed observation haki with which he can glimpse into the immediate future that presents Luffy with his most daunting challenge yet. But as one who's destined to be the king of pirates, Luffy, staying true to his persevering character, pulls off a seemingly impossible win against a rival who's never tasted defeat before. What makes this victory above the ordinary is that it's a lesson in camaraderie and honor an incredibly rare thing in the pirate world. Things get funky as we gear up for the next big matchup at Onigashima, which takes the next spot. Queen, one of Kaido's all-stars, faces off against Sanji, the Wonder Boy with genetic enhancements. When Sanji dons the Germa Raid suit, his latent genetic upgrades awaken. Unlike Zoro or Luffy though, Sanji hasn't had as many power-ups in the past, but this time, things are different. Capable of withstanding a powerful blow to the head and shattering Queen's sword instead, Sanji's endurance and durability skyrocket. Yet, afraid of losing his humanity, Sanji chooses to discard the suit. Instead, he devises an advanced version of his Diable Jambe, harnessing the power of his newfound enhancements and armament haki to craft the searing hot Ifrit Jambe. As the name suggests, the flames emanating from this technique, which are named after the fiery jinn of Arabic folklore, seem to hail from the depths of hell itself. Despite his formidable Zoan-type Brachiosaurus body bolstered with cybernetics, Queen finds himself on the receiving end of a severe beat. Although this clash takes a backseat to the more spectacular showdown between King and Zoro, witnessing Sanji move with newfound, almost imperceptible speed is breathtaking. We eagerly await Sanji's next lightning-fast display with bated breath. Next pick is easily the most brutal clash in Wano. To rescue Sanji, Robin walks into an obvious trap set by Toby Ropo Black Maria. Right. 
ostracized and hunted down due to her ability to decipher poneglyphs, Robin's not only pursued by the world government, but also coveted by powerful pirates like Kaido and Big Mom, all seeking the elusive island of Laugh Tale. Despite Black Maria's usual playful manner, she shows no mercy to Robin, relentlessly unleashing her Oiran knuckles in a bruising assault. It's not just the sheer physicality of the combat that sets this duel apart, but the cruelty with which Black Maria torments Robin, including plans to mutilate her body and just leave her barely alive to be of use to her captain. Robin, usually calm and composed, rises to the occasion by unveiling her demonio fleur form, a direct manifestation of her epithet Devil Child. Hands down one of the best power upgrades in this arc, the sheer terror Demonio Fleur invokes, especially the sickening sound of Black Maria's body breaking as she's ensnared in a grapple hold, elevates this battle to one of the most chilling sequences in the series. Moving on, in stark contrast to other pirates, the Straw Hats have always fought against injustice. So this brings us to our next pivotal clash. Luchi, a staunch advocate of dark justice, shows a complete lack of hesitation when it comes to committing heinous acts in pursuit of his mission, which is to eliminate Nico Robin. On the flip side, we have Luffy, engaged in one of the most crucial pre-time skip battles. Armed with his newly developed Gear 2 and Gear 3 techniques, he fearlessly confronts his adversary even in the face of a substantial power disparity. This battle is a defining moment in Luffy's journey, marked by his unwavering determination. The scene where Usopp desperately calls out to the almost unconscious Luffy still resonates with pain and desperation in our memories. The showdown between Yonko's Kaido and Big Mom against the worst generation sits in fourth place, and it remains one of the most badass battle sequences in One Piece to date. The sheer scale of this clash surpasses anything seen so far and is unlikely to be surpassed anytime soon. When two Yonkos take center stage, the very air crackles with the vibrant aura of their conqueror's haki. Standing before them are five of the worst generation, Luffy, Zoro, Eustace Kid, Killer and Law. Witnessing new alliances forming is always thrilling and the presence of the five is undeniable as they boldly challenge the seasoned pirates. One by one, they flaunt their incredible combat skills, dealing some serious damage to the Yonkos, feats we never thought were possible. In terms of teamwork and quick thinking, they're exceptional, never allowing Kaido and Big Mom a moment's respite. But remember, we're dealing with Yonkos here, pirate world giants who have ruled for decades. So Kaido and Big Mom, once comrades in the legendary Rocks Pirates during their youth, display equally flawless teamwork, capable of unleashing devastating destruction on an almost otherworldly scale. While the five young pirates are spirited, they face a colossal challenge in dealing with the two titans together. Moving on to the top three now. In the Grand Line, many pirates share a common goal, to become the Pirate King. Their second in commands, like Luffy's right hand Zoro and Kaido's lead performer King, are equally determined to help their captains achieve this dream, which fuels the cataclysmic battle in the third spot. <laughs> King, who boasts formidable combat skills as a Lunarian and an ancient zoan type Pteranodon, stands on a level above even some pirate captains. Similarly enough though, Zoro acknowledged as one of the most significant threats besides Luffy by the Marines can be said to be well on his way to surpass Mihawk. However, Zoro's earlier confrontation with Kaido atop the Skull Dome, which left him severely injured, was barely masked by a miracle drug. Furthermore, his newly acquired sword Enma constantly tests his limits with its unpredictable behavior. Despite these considerable hindrances, he matches King 
blow for blow. The ensuing battle is brought to life through some seriously stunning animation, and when he finally unleashes his conqueror's haki in a narrative strewn with many haki revelations, Zoro's display is in a world of its own. This remarkable scene is surpassed only by his execution of the King of Hell Three Sword style, which serves as his finishing move against King's ultimate technique. Not Today's runners-up eclipse all other battles with bizarre as the prevailing theme. The mere presence of Big Mom is a clear indicator that things are about to get wonderfully weird. Meanwhile, her opponents, Law and Kid, possess powers that defy the laws of reality. However, the main reason this battle holds the number two spot is because taking down a Yonko is no small feat. So while Luffy is occupied with Kaido, it falls to Law and Kid to confront Big Mom. Remember the havoc the pirate matriarch wreaked with just one screen during the whole Cake Island saga? Now we get to witness her in full combat glory. Big Mom boasts formidable Haki abilities as well as her soul soul fruit powers, not to mention her special homies Napoleon, Prometheus and Hera. Never a dull moment with her creative powers, we see Big Mom consume a year of her own lifespan to gain incredible size and strength dwarfing the two captains. Yet the determined duo retaliated with a flurry of mind-blowing techniques, barely allowing the audience a moment to catch their breath. Their awakened devil fruit abilities give Big Mom no breathing space. It's hard to imagine any of the worst generation facing off against this powerhouse even one story arc ago. But Lauren and Kid rise to the occasion, not even special homie Misery can stop them, and the Yonko is finally sent crashing in a silent explosion, marking the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. That brings us to the final victor of the day. As the drums of liberation herald the return of Joy Boy, Luffy defeats Kaido in the grandest showdown in One Piece. From the very outset of the Onigashima raid, when Luffy delivers his first seething Haki-infused punch to the eventual awakening of his Devil Fruit abilities, it's been an exhilarating roller coaster ride for fans. With every blow struck by Kaido and every instance where Luffy defies death, a storm of emotion surges within us. There are moments of comic relief like Kaido suddenly getting dead drunk to enhance his strength and Luffy's awakened abilities verging on the cartoonish. However, what stands out the most is the rapid evolution of Luffy's potential. He goes from infusing armament Haki into his attacks to emitting it, then mastering Conqueror's Haki, even learning it from Kaido, and ultimately unlocking the latent powers of his Devil Fruit. The fight itself undergoes a remarkable transformation, shifting from a vengeful takedown of a malevolent Yonko to an exhilarating contest between two incredibly powerful adversaries, almost bordering on a rivalry. This evolution adds an extra layer of enjoyment to the entire spectacle. The revelation that the gum gum fruit is, in fact, the human human fruit, Model Nika serves as the crowning moment. Kaido too remains a captivating character throughout. His unexpected display of honor when he dispatches an interfering agent partially redeems him and makes him more relatable as a man who goes by his own principles and aspirations, making the narrative all the more engrossing. With this epic clash now behind us, Luffy stands on the threshold of a brand new vista of adventures, promising an exciting journey ahead. And with that thought, we come to the end of this video. This was the top 20 One Piece fights, brought to you by Vinitube. So if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do, don't you? And thanks for sticking around to the very end. Until next time.